Spencer here, uh, putting together some MP9 kits, and uh, figured I'd do a little video on it since people seem to like that. Uh, yep, stay tuned. All right, first thing you want to do, or at least that I want to do, is I open up all these bags and cut everything up off the trees and then shave everything smooth. And I just do that ahead of time so I don't have to do it for every single bag as I'm building it. And that saves a lot of time because you're just focusing on one thing. Next thing is, uh, it's kind of important to glue the bearings. But all you do is you get some green Loctite and you clean the surface of these things with some, uh, you know, like some nitro cleaner or lacquer thinner or brake clean, some sort of solvent. And you put a little tiny bit of green Loctite. Also clean the inside of the uh, bearing races. A little bit here. All right, you can see here now the bearing is glued on. So you can't pull it off. That's what you want to see. The reason you want to use green Loctite is to prevent these surfaces from wearing out from the bearing, from this rotating inside the inner bearing race. And what happens is you get, I don't know if you'll see this in the video, but the bearing actually will wiggle on here quite a bit. And this is especially important on the nitro engines because you don't want your crankshaft to wear out. Even the diamond-like coating uh, will wear out from the ball, especially the ball bearings. There's a stainless steel inner race, and then vibrating on this thing going 40,000 RPM will etch that away, and then you'll have a wiggly clutch bell, and what happens when this spins inside the inner race of the bearing is it gets that, that's a lot of friction. It gets that bearing really hot, and that, the grease in there that you can't really service uh, just vaporizes. It goes away, and then you don't have any lubrication. So the rundown for gluing these the for gluing the drive shafts to the bearings to like your rear steering and the rear hubs uh, you do so you want to shim them first and so you'll want to I just I mean I do one on the inside and then the rest on the outside and you put one on and then you put your hub on make sure your bearings are pressed all the way in put it through and still some play and you'll want to do this until there's you know a tiny bit of play you don't want to have to force this pin in they say that there should be some play uh, but we're gonna glue this in basically this is so it doesn't doesn't break the glue out because the glue is not necessarily there to support the axle from moving in and out of the bearings So it was pretty easy to push the pin in, not really any play, spins freely, so we'll call that good. So now is the prep work. And then the nice, so the nice thing about these shims, uh, at least these, these are the 8mm shims that are a little, a little wider, so they have they have thinner ones, but they won't cover this. Just take the syringe with that uh, silicone grease. It's kind of thick. Get it squirted around here. This will do this inside bearing but it usually will wipe, a lot of it will wipe off, so you have to put a little bit on the outside bearing. So once you have that through, put your couple shims on, and that'll smash into the grease and create a little seal there. And it's important 
to wipe the excess off of here because you don't want to glue your hub to that. That makes it really hard to get off because there's so much surface area. So yeah, I mean, I like to put just a tad bit of grease here just to make that easier to get off. Always Loctite everything metal to metal. Not too much. Because then it's not very fun to get out even if it's not permanent. And that's it. And it's going to feel pretty thick because that, that grease is there between those shims and the bearings. But then it frees up for uh, doing these diffs. I'm pretty sure this little groove they put here is to, to retain grease. So I like to fill that up. And any extra is just going to smear out anyways. So you do that. And then by this time I also would have applied some grease here. To protect any dirt from getting in here. To protect against dirt from going in there. So then you put this guy in. That's where the O ring went. And then lubricate the O ring and push it on there. Send your pin in. And then you put your set screw in, right? And then I don't put this gear in yet. What I like to do is get some fluid put in here until it's it's up to this pin to the top of here. And then once it's up to there and you have like all these cracks filled. Then I get my gear and fill these and make sure there's no air there. Get these filled up and then plop it over. Get it down in there. And then keep filling it. And at that point, uh, then you can put these guys in. And get oil all around them. Because I don't think you really want, you want the least amount of air in these as possible. And these are obviously supposed to have the shims on the sides, but I don't want to deal with that right now. And then keep filling this thing with oil uh, until it's pretty damn full. And you plop this guy on and make sure it's pretty, it's, you know, it's filled all the way to the top. When this goes in here and pushes down to that pin, it's going to display some, so you have to leave pretty much just enough for that amount of displacement and get as full as you can and you know grease this guy do the same thing and then you just tie you just key it up and well, I guess you need your gasket it's I, I'm pretty sure it's kind of important to make sure there's not much silicone here like I'd really try hard to not get any here and like clean it off with a q-tip and make sure this is clean and then you put your gasket down And you get this guy dropped in there. And then I don't really push it in all the way. Like I'll hold it floating like this. Like not all the way down, but floating a little bit. Get all the screws in there and get them all screwed down pretty far. Because uh, I don't want to get silicone on those threads either. So you get them all down about as far as you can and then make sure that they spin with the oil in there. It's a little different. Make sure it's keyed up right and then push it together and then sometimes oil will come out the screw holes, but at least it's not on the entire threads, and then you finish screwing them in. So to check the gear, the play on these, what you want to do, ideally is you actually kind of want to bolt, put a couple bolts in here, but you hold the small gear and you wiggle the big gear. 
And you, this is the same thing for your gear mesh on anything else. You always want to hold the small gear because if you hold the big gear and rotate the small gear, the small gear rotates a lot, even if it's touching. So just go to a couple spots. And it was binding before without that one shim. But you can see there's a little bit of wiggle. That's what you want. So then once you get some grease on there, you know, not too much, like I put too much on here. The fact that it's sprayed out all over here which makes it kind of useless. That, that's pretty good there. So these little nubbin, uh, these insert, the suspension inserts, usually put a little bit of silicone around these because uh, once they get loose, they kind of like vibrate in there and then I think they start to wear out. So the silicone helps helps with that. All right, now that you got the front and rear ends together, you're gonna want to, uh, just a little bit of silicone here. And the, the, the more flexible stuff, not like the gray is really rigid and this black stuff's pretty flexible. And you can look it up, there's like durometer ratings on all of them. So just a tiny bit. Cause you don't want dirt to get in the differentials and somehow it always will creep in if there's no sealant. Easy as that. 